Marjorie's investigating a sound in the back corner. You can't see her. Marjorie! There she is. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today for my June Makes episode. I have to say it slowly or else I'll say the wrong month. <laughs> um, it's the last day of June, June 30th of 2022. I'm coming to you from the Pacific Northwest. I live in the greater Seattle area of Washington State in the United States and it's a beautiful sunny day very few clouds in the sky yet somewhat cool out <laughs> we've already had our heat wave of uh, high 80s just breaking over 90 degrees Fahrenheit when was that that was this past weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, yeah, it was not pleasant, but not as bad as the over 100 degree weather we had last year. So thank goodness for having some AC units to put in the windows really quickly. It got us through the weekend just fine, so yay. Of course, Barely little knitting happened during that heat wave because you know how it is. It just the yarn sticks to you and I just get sweaty all over it and basically I just don't want to do anything because I'm exhausted and it's, it's not like I haven't been through heat like that before. It's just that I'm not used to it anymore, I'm not acclimated to it anymore. So when that kind of heat hits us here, I just shut down. I just don't want to do anything. So anyway, despite all of that, knitting did happen this month. So let me take you through the projects that I finished this month. I've got knitting, I've got spinning, uh, some works in progress of, of new projects in the makes that didn't get finished that will carry over to the next month and uh, of course there will be a giveaway at the end of this episode so stick around. So I think I'm gonna start with spinning. Oh and I have my window open here and I just felt a breeze. <gasps> Feels so good. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start with spinning, uh, finished spinning. So I have two finished spins that I want to show you. So both of these should look familiar. <laughs> They're kind of ongoing projects I have. Uh, but this one here, the orange, is a Romney mohair blend that I purchased from the Pines Farm earlier this year. And I already spun up a bunch of this into a three-ply yarn that I knit socks out of. And what I wanted to do uh, was also spin up a two-ply version and knit up a pair of socks and compare the two three-ply to two-ply. So the three-ply yarn came out with a grist that was close to a sport weight or a DK weight. I really need to put a chart up on my wall that tells me which one of those two is thicker than the other because <laughs> I can't remember. Um, so the two ply is definitely a fingering weight. So the grist is 1645 yarns per pound. So 1645 yards per pound, which is in the fingering weight range. Uh, I have 59 grams of yarn here and 214 yards. So that's going to be enough to make a, another shorty pair for myself. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think the toe up worked really well with the other 
pair of socks. So I'm going to do toe up again and it's going to be fun. Um, but yeah, it spun up very nicely and can I get it to focus if I tap the screen or something? No, why would it do that? Anyway, uh, it's, it's great. So I have this wonderfully squishy skein of fingering weight yarn uh, that I am going to knit socks out of. Um, in fact, we are planning a pretty big trip this July. So part of this spin was to get me this yarn so I could knit socks while we're on the road. So that's my plan. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, so I've added 214 yards to my stash with this spin and I'm really happy about it. The other spin is some uh, Carrie Hill wool that I dyed and spun. Oh, it's so nice. And I have more of this out in the living room that I'm spinning. Um, I, I'm really on a kick to, to spin stuff down and knit out of it and, and get things washed and going and just working with the stuff that I have. Uh, so this is 100% Carrie Hill fiber, which is a wool, a breed of sheep. Um, I hand dyed and blended four different colors in here. We've got black, teal, and two different shades of green. Uh, this is a two-ply yarn. And this came out to fingering weight. So I was really frustrated with, um, I spun some of this earlier, and my intent was to spin for a particular pattern, which called for worsted weight yarn. And my yarn is, I think it's more of an Aran weight. It's too thick. I just don't think it's gonna work. Um, and I thought, you know what, just let me tell, let the fiber tell me what it wants to be instead of trying to force it. And I think it's better as a fingering weight yarn than as a worsted weight. So I'm just gonna spin it up into fingering weight yarn. So this is two ply. I've got 32 grams of yarn here. That's 138 yards. So the grist is uh, 1956 yards per pound. So 1,956 yards per pound. So even more yards per pound than this guy. And I think that has a lot to do with the prep of this fiber. Um, I don't know, because this was also, this was prepared as Rolex, which is woolen. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going <laughs> to speculate. I've got too many things to get through in this episode. But uh, yeah, so that's another 138 yards added to my stash. I still have more of this fiber uh, that's dyed that I'm currently spinning. And I have more Carrie Hill wool that I will probably also just dye up and blend and you know what i'll just make i mean look at this color this is this is amazing and i love this so if i just spin up enough of this to make a sweater out of that would be fantastic uh wishful thinking <laughs> uh but yeah that those are my spinning uh my finished spins I'm also working on some fiber preparation. There's going to be a video series I put up on the channel about cotton. So I have spent several days uh, with the cotton that my mom sent me and I've been removing the actual cotton fibers from the, uh, from the plant, from the stems. She just picked it off a plant, put it in a box and sent it to me. So I've been picking all the cotton out, all the seeds out and everything. So I have this big bowl uh, from the kitchen <laughs> that is full of cotton. So this has all been separated. There are no seeds in here. And uh, 
it's just a big cloud of fluff. So um, I had previously uh, tried the whole trying to find a surface to set that down. Uh, I had tried the whole uh, process of picking out the cotton from the seeds and everything, and I prepared it into roll eggs, and I spun up a small sample of cotton yarn um, because I wanted to see if I could do the whole process <laughs> before working with all of it, and I love the end result. So that's where I am now is tackling the rest of the cotton that my mom sent me. And <laughs> so, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, so that you will see more of in a separate video, but I did finish um, picking the cotton away from the the stems and I don't know the names of all the parts of a cotton plant but you know the really hard shells that the the cotton grows out of oh yeah so all of that is out in the compost bin feeding the compost bin and not in here taking up space which is amazing so uh so yeah lots of fun is going on there now, if you follow me on Instagram, <laughs> uh, at, at Heart House on Instagram, you'll see that I did finally finish the baby blanket that I was working on. Uh, and I did finally come up with a name for this pattern also, which is great. Uh, and so the pattern is posted on Ravelry, and I have a tutorial video here on the channel. Uh, so this is my countryside baby blanket and let me just stand up and show you the whole thing oh yeah <laughs> oh, this thing is amazing all right so it's a corner to corner baby blanket and here's the corner where i cast on and worked across to the middle uh, and then <laughs> bound off over here, right? Yeah, pretty awesome. So this is, I'll tell you about the yarn in a moment, although if you've been watching, you've seen it. But I called it countryside because, um, I grew up in Michigan and there were lots and lots of fields of crops. So corn, potatoes, uh, rows and rows and rows of crops. And if you've ever driven past a cornfield, for example, you can see down the rows of corn and as you're driving you get these glimpses of diagonals through the corn and it's just kind of mesmerizing and so I thought that this pattern kind of mimicked that whole um, idea of crops being in rows and you get these diagonal images and it's it's just reminds me of home which is fun uh, but yeah, so Countryside Baby Blanket is finished. The yarn that I used um, and is now easily my favorite thing to do with baby blankets is uh, I used two skeins of Hawaiian Brand Mandala. These have two different labels, which is hilarious. Uh, but the colors are Dragon and Serpent. So you can see the color patterns here. And so what I do is I stripe the colors, the two skeins, and they blend and meld and create these new color patterns, which is super fun. So I used about a thousand, a little,
little over a thousand um, yards in here. So that's out of the stash two balls of yarn uh, and made a pattern out of it, which is great. So that is finished and can go in the pile of baby blankets I have going now. And then I was, I was um, having trouble sitting down and creating the tutorial videos. Um, we just finished up school. So we had final exam week, graduation, you know, faculty get togethers to celebrate the end of the year. And I earned tenure and there were parties for all the things, especially now that we're able to actually go to campus in person and gather together and not have to wear masks. It's been nice to actually see each other again and socialize. So, oh gosh, it was just really hard to find time at the end of a long day to come home and record a tutorial video. Uh, but I knew I wanted to work on that blanket. So what I did is I knit hats using the countryside stitch, if you will. So, <laughs> so, um, so I, I made three hats uh, in, in June, which is super fun. And also a really nice, like small thing to knit on when it's warm outside. And I love wearing hats in the winter time. We can't get enough hats in this house. <laughs> um, so I just used up scraps in my stash and made some hats. So the first one here is actually should look familiar, uh, leftover lion brand mandala of two colors that I striped together in a previous blanket, and these were leftovers. And so I did the striping technique, same as in the blanket. I mean, look at the colors here. <laughs> uh, and uh, it turned it into a hat. So. There we go. And yeah. It's pretty nice. So I used up some leftovers. Uh, this pretty much finished off those two little uh, bits of leftovers. And then here, um, I wanted to play around with, okay, so these are two different um, skeins that kind of stripe, as you can see here with the color changes. Um, these two are just solid color yarns, so what does it look like if we don't have um, all that striping going on, right? If it's just two solid colors. Now these are two shades of blue that are like medium and light. So it's not a huge contrast, but I kind of like that because you get to see the texture a bit more with the stitches, which is quite nice. So I like that effect as well. Um, so it's kind of cool. the hat is almost like a sampler for the blanket and then after this I was like oh I really want more contrast so I went with a solid color and a variegate that are they have no colors in common <laughs> um, so it'd be very uh, drastic so there's a solid black and then this variegate goes with white yellow and this really soft green uh, and so on uh, here so you get that big pop of contrast and I just think it looks also looks really nice and uh, used up a bunch of yardage from my stash which is what I'm trying to do so uh, so yeah these are all um, the label on the yarn is a three, right? You see that little skein logo and it has a number three in it and it says light. So all of these are that light weight kind of yarn. Uh, but yeah, so uh, there will also be a countryside hat pattern coming out at some point in the future. 
Uh, not during the month of July because I'm going to be busy with vacation plans. So I'm thinking uh, August. But yeah, that was really fun. And then I was just on this hat kick with my hand spun. So I cast on another hat, but this time out of hand spun. So this is fiber from uh, Wound Up Fiber Arts in the Moonwalk colorway. And this is uh, like a worsted weight uh, yarn. And I love it because it just, when I washed it, it just bloomed a lot. That's the issue I had with the Carrie Hill fiber is that when I finished, while I was spinning, I was like, this looks like a worst weight yarn. I had my control card out and I was doing all that. And then after I washed it, it bloomed and became thicker. And I heard people talk about that and I didn't realize, I just didn't put two and two together anyway. So this, I thought I was spinning fingering weight and then I washed it and it bloomed and now it's closer to a worsted weight. But, oh my gosh, these colors in this yarn, oh, it's so pretty. So um, this is not another countryside. You might recognize it now. I cast on uh, Barley by Tin Can Knits, which I believe is a free pattern on Ravelry. I think it's free. It was in my library. I just went to my library on Ravelry and searched for hat patterns I already had in my pattern stash. <laughs> and the barley was there, but I think it was free. Um, if not, I'll say so on the screen. But uh, yeah, so it's just been a nice, um, easy knit while watching TV, uh, relaxing at the end of the day, or knitting during 90 degree weather. I did a little bit on this. Uh, but I think I have, I have another um, ball of yarn with 99 yards in it. So if this isn't enough, I have more, but I think this is gonna be enough. So we shall see. Uh, but this is definitely a hat for me. <laughs> This is mine. I'm claiming it. It is not being given away. It's mine. So there. And then I cast on, I've been doing a bunch of spinning. So the hand spun hat uh, kind of rejuvenated my spinning mojo. And I got back into spinning. And then I really wanted um, a nice mindless knit. And I'm also trying to set myself up for easy projects I can work on while we're on vacation. And of course, socks are my go-to for uh, easy to handle knitting, especially while in a car. Uh, so I cast on a sock out of some wonderful Patton's Croy. This is a color I uh, that's new to me. I haven't seen it in the stores before. And I'll grab another ball with a label. I can't remember the color name off the top of my head, but we'll get there. And uh, yeah, I'm just playing around with ribbing on the side. Maybe I'll take, let me take a video facing the other way so you can see it better. So yeah, you can see the texture it's creating on there with uh, playing around with the ribbing. And then of course it's a self-striping yarn so you've got a little bit of color interest as well going on. Uh, so I think this pattern will also look nice knit up in a uh, solid color. You'll get to see the texture a bit more and uh, like a light speckle. Uh, yeah, but uh, basically I'm just setting myself up. So I really need to stop knitting on this now <laughs> and save this for the road trip. Uh, but yeah, this yarn is an addition to the stash. I went shopping, so I cast some of it on right away, right here. Uh, 
And yeah, that finishes the knitting and spinning of projects and transitions me into stash acquisition. This is a new uh, stash acquisition this month and I have two bags of stuff that I came home with uh, after we went shopping. So let me <laughs> grab the new yarn uh, so I can show you what I brought home. Okay, I got a whole lot of Patton's Croy sock yarn. Patton's Croy sock yarn is awesome. <laughs> uh, it makes really lasting, durable socks that my husband and I both love. So when I saw this sticker that says $1.99, this bright orange sticker throughout the sock yarn section, actually my husband spotted it. We started seeing, first of all, none of the sock yarn was on sale when I went, or sorry, none of the yarn. And so I was like, ah, oh, I don't know that I'm gonna get anything. And then we started seeing these orange stickers. And so Michael went to the sock yarn and was like, Alicia, you have to come over here right now. And yeah, uh, a lot. So they're normally, $7.99 and they were reduced to $1.99. Ah, yeah. So, um, I got a lot because hello, this is sock yarn and I love sock knitting. So this is the color um, that I have cast on. The color is 50s stripes and it's my favorite out of the ones we picked up. So I have six balls of this. Yeah, I clean I clean them out. I just I just took all of this color. <laughs> and I got these are all colors that I had not seen before. So I don't know what's going on. But uh did they find them in the back somewhere? I, I don't know. Uh, but there's this black and white stripe one that I have not seen before, so we'll see how it knits up. The colorway is zebra stripes, which makes sense. So I got four of these. Yep. <sighs> yeah. So we're up to 10 balls of Patton's Croy. And then I got two of this colorway. This is called Mid-Century Stripes. And two of those. So that's 12. And two of this color, which is 70s Stripes. Clearly I like the 50s better. Yep, so there we go. So that's 14. And I got two of this color, which is sidewalk chalk stripes. Sounds appropriate. So that's 16. And two of this color. And this one is magic stripes. So 18. So I got 18 balls of Patton's Croy sock yarn because it was mega clearance and I had to have it. I have not knit with any of these colors. So not only were they on sale, but they are new to me colors. So they were mine. <laughs> uh, and then, um, there was some of, let's see if I can find, I think all of them have the sticker right over the name. Yep, all of them do. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so this was at um, Hobby Lobby, by the way. So you can see this skein is originally, I don't know if you can see that, $6.99 and it was on sale for $1.74. 
Uh, it is Must Be Merino. Colorway Silver Gray. So this is 50% merino wool and basically 50% man-made fibers. It's 25% acrylic, 25% nylon. But yeah, 50% merino wool. And uh, I got five balls of it. So this is a another one of those beautiful size three yarns. And so it has 227 yards in 100 grams in this ball. So I bought 500 grams of this. So my hope is a sweater. Uh, I may need to combine in other yarn with it because uh, I don't know that this is quite enough. But I mean, a dollar seventy-four times five. I mean, you really can't beat that. So, and then there's this stuff, which is originally nine ninety nine, and was on sale for two forty nine. And no, I am not going to, you know, knit with this. Uh, this is gonna be spun, of course. This is spinning fiber to me. <laughs> okay, so this is 65% acrylic, 35% polyamide. So, I mean, there's no, there's no wool in here or anything. But are you kidding me? Look at these colors. This is going to be so fun. I could blend this with wool or I could just spin it as is, but I got... I got three of these, because that's what they had were three, and so I just put them all in my cart. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Are you kidding? This is going to be so fun to spin with because of how colorful it is. Amazing. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with all of that i spent sixty dollars when you add in tax so i have enough for nine pairs of socks uh, basically a sweater and this is 10 ounces and 30 ounces of spinning fiber Yeah, I'm a happy, I'm a happy gal. I'm a happy crafter. That's for sure. So, uh, I'm all set for <laughs> travel knitting, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I could take any of these and just knit socks out of them. It could be a pattern or no pattern. Uh, I think ribbing. Uh, Michael and I both like socks with ribbing in them because they stay up on the leg better. But, uh... Yeah, sometimes you just never know what's going to be on sale or mega clearance until you walk in the store and look around. And happy surprise, I found the jackpot. So <laughs> so I came home with a pot of gold, you guys. I'm excited. So now it's time for the giveaway. So uh, last month's video, the May Makes video, I asked you to comment on the video about anything and you would be entered into a drawing for a prize and the giveaway prize is grab it <laughs> Rolex of the same Romney mohair fiber that I have been spinning up for socks uh, and I've got about two ounces here uh, left over which is roughly what I just spun up here into two ply uh, fingering weight yarn. Anyway, uh, so this is up for grabs uh, and so I'm going to draw a random winner from the comments on the May Makes video and yes thank you for those of you who um, did not want to enter the giveaway 
uh, because you don't spin or you're not interested in the fiber, I mean, whatever the reason, I totally appreciate you writing in the comments. I'm not entering the giveaway, <laughs> but you still wanted to leave a comment. So I super appreciate that. And you are not being included in the random selection. Okay. Uh, so super appreciate that. Uh, so, uh, any of you who do not say such things, you are being included in this. And uh, future Alicia, when she's editing this podcast, <laughs> is going to put the winner's name up here on the screen. So you have to look at the screen. I know, if you're driving, you'll have to come back to this video. Okay. <laughs> but congratulations, winner. <laughs> You have won uh, the two ounces, or roughly roundabouts, of the uh, Romney mohair fiber, uh, and it's I'm going to ship it to you, still in Rolag form. So it's all prepped and ready to go. Um, yes, and so I am going to ship this to you, wherever you are. Uh, so whoever the winner is, again, name on screen, uh, please send me um, either a message on Ravelry. My username on Ravelry is knits 2 Send me a message on Ravelry. Or send me a message on Instagram. I'm dhardhouse on Instagram. Uh, or send me an email. And the email is dharthousepodcast at gmail.com. And all this contact information is down below in the description box. Uh, but you need to contact me and let me know your uh, shipping address so that I can actually mail this to you. Uh, now, I am going on vacation right after July 4th. So July 4th is Independence Day in the United States. It's a big holiday where people barbecue and drink and, you know, set things on fire with fireworks. <laughs> so it's a crazy time and we usually shut ourselves in for that holiday to avoid all of the things. Uh, so we're gonna go on vacation after that. <laughs> uh, but we are going to be gone for like three weeks. So if you can, the winner of the giveaway, if you can message me, uh, see July 4th, the post office won't be open. Okay. You're not going to get, I'm not going to be able to ship your package until we get back from our vacation, which will be late July. So I apologize in advance for the late shipping delivery of your prize, but I promise it's worth it because it was a joy to spin with. Okay. Uh, but yes, I've been slow to give out prizes for giveaways. I super apologize. This time it will be because I'm just gone. A legit reason this time instead of pure laziness. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so we are going on a trip to um, Michigan, actually, where I'm from. And we're driving and taking our pop-up camper with us. So we're gonna camp along the way out there. We're gonna camp up and down throughout Michigan and camp on the way home. And it's just gonna be a, a, a lot of camping. We're going to visit with some family. We're going to see some of the touristy sites. So it's going to be a really fun time. Uh, so yeah, I will be knitting while being a passenger in the car, as long as I'm a passenger. I'll get a little bit of knitting done. Uh, but I don't, I don't know, because we're going to be busy, like, seeing the sights and everything. So I'm excited. <sighs> All right. Thanks for sticking around till the end. I really appreciate it. So I think the giveaway for next month, let's go ahead and plan on it being a another pattern prize off of Ravelry. Uh, and so 
what I'll do is I will purchase you a pattern off of Ravelry up to a 10 US dollar value and it can be any pattern knitting crochet can you put weeding patterns on Ravelry probably whatever it doesn't matter the craft it doesn't matter who it's from or what currency or anything like that uh, but the pattern of your choosing up to 10 US dollars in value and so whoever is randomly selected for next month's giveaway I will buy you a pattern and add to your pattern stash uh, so all you have to do to enter the giveaway is comment below on this video so June makes and this time I do have a prompt because I'm wondering what folks have for their summer plans or win winter plans if you're in the southern hemisphere, um, hemisphere. Now I'm doubting myself whether that's correct. Whatever. <laughs> what plans do you have for the next few months, July, August, September? the months when it's summer in the United States and usually folks are going on vacation, swimming, seeing family, barbecuing, fireworks, what traveling out of the country and visiting sites. What are what are you up to? Are you participating in Tour de Fleece? I'm not cuz I'm going to be on the road. <laughs> so just comment down below and let me know what your um, plans are for the next few months, whether it's with your crafting or with traveling or goals you've set for yourself. There goes my phone jingling because I didn't turn the volume off. <laughs> uh, and just let me know down below in the comments and then I will randomly choose a winner in next month's video. So that's it. I've talked enough. It's time to get editing. <laughs> uh, I hope you stay safe stay healthy, and that you enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Take care, and I'll see you next month.